out, know what I mean? So the Volvo swap begins. Um, I put the old radiator back in the S10, pulled it outside, so I can get a, uh, a last drive in it before I rip it apart. You know, last little hoorah in it, have some fun. Uh, maybe do a big, big burnout in it. Um, so a video about that to come here soon. It may come out for this, who knows? Um, but got the hood off, hoods up there. About to jack it up and put it on. Uh, the wooden blocks so once we get it on the, the wooden blocks like that we will uh, start working on ripping everything out maybe have the motor out in a little bit so I'll get get cracking on it got the whole front clip off and set off over there so I'm going to finish unplugging some wires in here um, I guess just chop the exhaust right past the uh, manifold there and then mount mount tranny mount drive shaft and she's ready to come out so that should be that and unhook some power steering shit which honestly this looks like the same power steering setup for the ls so this should be easy to make this shit work so fun fun i'm gonna finish pulling this motor out one step closer got the ac power steering and whatnot unhooked all the lines pushed out of the way um so really it's just transmission mount drive shaft and then uh, some mount bolts on each side should be super simple um, get it up out and then uh, she she's ready to be pushed outside clean the engine bay figure out what harness needs to come out and what stays wiring wise and then push the truck in so or drive the truck in after we do a burnout first but yeah getting there all right motor training out all in one piece yeah, so motor and tranny's out. Fucking fish drip out of there, wasn't too bad. Um, we just got a tornado warning or hurricane. Tornado. 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 Uh, so um, we're gonna call it quits, go inside, get some dinner done before all this nonsense rain and shit gets here. Get fill up some gas cans, but she is ready to pressure wash and pull some of the engine harness stuff out and leave the body harness stuff. But, uh, getting there she's ready now shove her out pressure washer pull the s10 in and rip it apart so i'm going to we did a burnout in the s10 today a couple of them actually just as a, a last day uh get the driver type thing so we're going to pick back up on this thing the next couple days i got off so just soak down the engine bay just an old purple fire real quick unless it's probably still starting to dry a little bit the heck it's basically just taking off that nasty gunk build up is just falling off so I let the old lady spray it down with the water hose and it's a big difference I'm not finished I'm going to finish spraying down some other spots on the body and we'll rinse all this crap off. 
2,000 years later. So the Denali's in. Um, I need to get this thing, get my motor pulled out uh, and get it set out the way. Get everything, basically getting everything ready to go in the Volvo and ship this thing down the road. Uh, it's been sitting out in the yard forever and I'm just, I need to get it in here. I've got a gap. I've got time. I'm waiting on paint so I can paint this before I pull any other motors in here and pull them apart and start building them. Um, so I want to go ahead and get this knocked out and then I can just shove it back outside for the time being. But for now, I just, I need to get this thing, all my stuff out and get this old girl ready to rock and roll for the Volvo. So, she's ready to come out. Got the motor mount bolts out. Let's get her lifted up. All right, go ahead up. All right, hold on. Come forward some. Just a tad bit of trimming back here. Nothing crazy. I can just massage this down with a Dremel. But it's going to be a close one. I might have to chop off some of this nonsense on the top, but everything looks good. Eventually, I'll get another pan or I'll make a pan. Uh, but for now, it's going to have to hang down a little bit. Got plenty of room for everything else. I'm going to go ahead and get a manifold in here mocked up and see what we're looking like. Cutting the DM tube in. Getting ready to make the pedestals for the mounts. Yes, oh yo. Also, don't forget about me. Looking for them skanks, them skanks, and them wizards. So I got some spare time between some stuff. Um, waiting on parts and some other things. So I got this motor pulled back out of the Denali while I had a chance. And I said, heck with it, let's go ahead while I'm waiting. I'm still waiting for paint. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the Volvo in and just sit the motor in, make some mounts, tack them up, bolt it in, and then I can shove it back out and finish it later. So I've got my mock-up ADE out of the building. Uh, we got it from the junkyard for like 50 bucks. Dude was bringing it back when we were leaving and said that there was something internally broken, that there was no way for him to rebuild it. Don't know what that is, but we're just going to use it for mock-up for now. Maybe we'll tear into it one day and see what's wrong with it. I've got one header bolt I've got to tap and re-thread right there uh, I've got these ICT uh, adapters and some small block style uh, mounts I believe GM mounts uh, I had to swap these though side to side because the plan is to run AC on this is gonna be a street daily driver jump in anybody can drive that makes 500 ish horsepower to the tires uh, for the time being we're gonna use the small 7875 on three that we have and it should be plenty on low boost for pump gas and I've got just about everything to do it. Um, this is the mounts right here. I'm gonna cut these down. I got a set of bushings that I have bought that are the correct diameter. And they'll slide in there. So I'm gonna have to trim these down though to make them fit between that because they are too wide together. So I'm gonna cut those down. I cut me a, a sheet out of it, put them in, sleeve in, and they're going to go in between here. And then that's going to give me the ability to make a pedestal off of that onto this. Um, I've got an F-body pan that I've been hoarding up. It's going to have to run truck accessories because uh, the F-body alternator location, the hole got wallered out. Uh, so I would only have one good hole here. So I'm just going to run truck accessories. And with making my own mounts, I should be able to clear the alternator with the hood and still the intake and oil pan clear also. So we're going to work on this tomorrow. I uh, got to swap the pan, bolt the transmission up to that, and then we can start tucking this old girl in here and see what kind of room we've got. 
Um, then I'm gonna make a transmission cross member, and then we can figure out a drive shaft option once we've got it in there, what we think looks good um, and gonna work. I'm gonna get a drive shaft measured and figure out uh, what we're looking like as far as getting one made or an adapter or whatever we need to do. So I've got just about everything to finish it. I've got, I believe, a spare F-body harness, I believe. Um, so I've got a harness. It's got all the AC and stuff. I just need to uh, repin it. I've got an ECU. Uh, fuel pump-wise, I know these are on an inline, so I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do there yet. I've got uh, some bigger in-tank pumps. I've got a turbo. Really, 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 before it goes on the butt. I've got decapped injectors. I've got just about everything to do it. I got an intake. Um, got all the accessories for the most part. I'm gonna have to make some AC lines. Um, they come out and run down here, and I believe it went from there up to the old compressor, and then come back down in from these off of the uh, condenser on the front. So, gonna have to make my own lines from here down. So I'm gonna have to weld some up together. But uh, I'm definitely ready to get this thing going. I think it's something that we could get running and fired up. Uh, the drive shaft's going to be the only, excuse me, oddball thing that's going to take a minute to get. Everything else I pretty much have. So if I can get it all buttoned up, sat in, ready to roll, and just got to get a drive shaft, uh, should be uh, not too much to get this thing on the road, driving again, back to the fun it is, but with power now. About to get started, what we do is I'm putting the pan on, I'm going to go ahead and clean up everything real good, uh, get all this gunk off, about out of brake clean. So I'm going to clean up as best I can for the time being, uh, go ahead, drain the oil, it's brand new oil, so I should be able to reuse it, I'll put it in a clean pan, so I can pour it back in, and I'm going to go ahead and get this thing ready to go in. Uh, F-body pan on. I'll probably do a rear cover and main seal later. For the time being, for mock-up purposes, just gonna put the pan on and get it set down in there. So we can see what kind of room we're looking at as far as uh, manifolds and whatnot. So let me go ahead and unbolt everything. I'll bring you guys back once I get the F-body pan on. So um, draining the oil seemed to be like maybe a little bit of moisture or something got in it. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's just from the oil sat for so long but it's, it's pretty nasty. Luckily, I don't think it was ran through the motor. Uh, it's just thick goop and stuff. But like I said, I think it's just from sitting. Everything else is clean. I don't think it got ran through the motor. So I'm going to proceed. I don't think it's a problem or an issue. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish putting everything together. I'm gonna pull this pump off. Um, we put this motor together in 2007, 16 or 17, whenever I first originally uh, was putting the S10 together. This was an engine out of a parts truck that we got that everything else was gutted. It was sitting on the frame. It got loaded with a tractor. Uh, we pulled the engine out off the trailer and then it went to scrap. This thing had 300 plus thousand miles on it. It was a 06. Uh, we pulled it apart to gap the rings only to find that it gen 4 piston and rod setup. So I was very pleased um, So I've held on to this motor and not let it go. So it's Everything in there is clean. So it's a good gen 4 bottom end sloppy stage 2 cam 243 heads with pack 1218 springs and all I did to the combustion chambers was just massage them and smooth them out So there's no sharp edges uh, the usual stuff so it's it's got whatever pump was probably on it. I don't think I ported it. I don't think I did uh, shims on the spring. Nada. I just literally slapped it together. We gapped the rings because some of them were 19,000. Some of them were 26 already and 29. It was all over the place. So we made them all 28 or 29, top and bottom. Put it together. Never got to run in the S10 at the time. Um, and the motor in my Trans Am had blown up. Uh, started knocking so I pulled it out pulled this engine out immediately since it was not a daily driver It was just a toy that I was putting together and I put it in the Trans Am and it ran amazing It's uh, this thing made plenty of power. I drove it for by two years daily driving it beating the living dog snot out of it Like anytime I left somewhere from a light or something. I was usually on the limiter just doing a burnout 
Uh, so, it, I mean, I've probably got 20,000 miles on this motor, if not more, uh, each year. I drove the shit out of it. So, and then it went back in the S10, was boosted for a little while, and then pulled it out. And then it got pulled for this, but ended up getting stuck in the Denali. And then we fired it up just for a little bit, drove it a little bit, uh, just pulled back out the yard and into the yard, and that was it. So, it sat since. So, we're going to pull this stuff apart. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go ahead and go in there and I'm gonna massage that out just a tad. And I'm gonna go ahead and swap it, pull that spring, put a couple shims in there and get this thing with a little bit more pressure. Got the top off, it doesn't look really scarred up or nothing crazy. Uh, the gears itself look pretty good. Doesn't look like I said a lot of that gunk or nastiness got in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean all this out with a little bit of brake clean. Well, I'll probably just dremel it first, then clean it with some brake clean. So I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna knock this down. Just finished up cleaning it up. As you can see, a lot less restriction now. So the oil has a straight, smooth path, no ridges or rough spots to get by all the way up. Uh, Got everything cleaned up with brake clean, putting some of the good HVL racing oil uh, assembly lube on it, and we'll put this thing back on the motor and get ready to clean pan up and get it bolted up in also. All right, guys, so a little bit of info for the one people that don't know. You've got two different style pickup tubes for an LS. You've got one that is straight up and down, and then you have one that has a slight flare to it as it goes up, or it has a groove right where the uh, bottom of the rust is there. Uh, if, you, if your OE engine, when you pull it apart, if it came with a red O-ring, which is for this one, you'll get a green O-ring from milling to put on it. Uh, if it came with a blue O-ring that would go on something like this, then you would end up with the black O-ring like that one. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the O-ring put on, a little bit of lube on it and get it up in there and get it bolted up and start cleaning my pan. Measured between between this mount right here and I come up with 59 millimeters. So I took 59 millimeters and then I measured the width of this bushing together and it come up to 74 and like 74.3 I think. So I just did 74 so I minus 59 away from 74 to give me 15 so then I took 15 divided by that that by 2 which is 7.5 millimeters and I took and I scribed you can see right here a line on each one with the uh, micrometer yeah micrometer dial caliber dial caliber yeah dial caliber whatever so and then I scribed it all the way around so I'm going to cut my 15 millimeters out and then that should put it together enough to fit in here perfectly slim, snug, and then I can chop my 15 mil off of this. All right, so not catching it, which I'd already cut. Um, and it was my fault. I'm over here, you know, and I'm trying to put the measure in. I'm sitting them side by side like this. So it's hard for me to tell. Wasn't paying no attention. So it's like, all right, what's gonna fit? Man, don't even line up. So, I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set the motor and tranny in there first, see where it sits, um, and then I'm gonna go from there. I might try to just add a bracing, so weld a tab to the edge of that down to where this sits down here, and then I'll brace it with some gussets on the back side or whatever I need to do. Um, or if there is enough room or isn't enough room to lower this down much farther because that's a pretty decent amount off the motor now if i can't get it that far away i'm just gonna go ahead and make some out of steel myself because this bushing should soak up most of the torsion i probably don't need the other second bushing too i'm gonna go ahead come down here and hammer out this tunnel because i'm pretty sure there's a good bit of stuff that doesn't fit about what I've read. We are on the way in. Putting her in place. I gotta. So the downfall of this is when you start 
start bringing this back, it starts hitting that. So you can't quite, you can't have it this far. And yeah, it's the downfall to it. If it's in a weird spot and it ends up being no bueno, I wish this was something I could take on and off, but it's just got a roll pin in it, so. All right, let me figure out, I should have put it on the other end, but I thought it would hit the firewall, which it does sometimes, and it's spun around. So let me figure out what I'm gonna do with this real quick. Buckle back. All right, got the engine set down in there. Uh, didn't take a video, I just took a picture of it. Uh, had the cardboard kind of folded up and set underneath it just to give it a, a space between this cross member. And just quick looking on the internet, I was trying to find and see, you know, who's used truck pins, how much it took off, and just trying to scroll around. A lot of people are, you know, buying a buy a holly pan or buy a mass pan. I'm not trying to spend money. Again, cheap is good, but free is better. So I'm trying to use everything I've got. I put the truck pan back on it, took the F-body pan off. Fuck, what you after, bro? I ain't got no more Slim Jims, dude. So truck pan is back on it. it it'll sit down in there really nicely, actually. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and by what I found, a guy was saying that Giffen, who makes mount kits fairly cheap and I don't remember being as cheap as they are, I would've just bought those instead, but we're gonna work with what we got now. So I'm gonna make a set to work with this to fit a truck intake under the hood, pan up just enough, um, but I'm gonna cut. Their recommendations was three quarters, in, three quarters of an inch back or down or whatever and 10 inches wide so 10 inches is basically perfect from where the edge of the mount would have mounted right there on each side so i'm gonna cut the same amount each way then flip it around and it'll inlay back the other way and then i'll weld it back in and then i'm gonna cut this edge right there and then weld that seam back because this right here hits the pan also so that'll give us a little more room to spare to come forward to get the transmission up and away from the tunnel as much as possible. Piece is cut out. Let's grab a, don't walk under there, it's hot. Yeah, don't want you to burn your tootsies. Grab a pair of pliers. Oh, there's like some other weird pieces right here I'm gonna cut off first. I must cut all the way through, so they might just break off. Yeah. Let me see if I can get this thing up in place. Probably about to cool it down. I'm about to grind that piece down. Let's see if I can get it in there. About to run this in here real quick. Uh, lay this up in here like so. Put a tack weld and then start kind of hammering around and, and uh, put some good tacks on it. Just finished up welding, huh, pack a pack. It's hot over here, don't touch it. So, just finished it up. Uh, only downfall. This water doesn't do it as bad. Paco, come on, get out of here. Come here, come here, pop, 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 come here. Come here, Paco, come here. Paco, come, come, get over here so you burn, don't burn yourself. Get over here, thank you. Uh, but yeah, the only downfall is this one, I haven't had it do it. Uh, the old Harbor Freight, once you, you get running, trying to run a bead for a long period of time or bubble gum, whatever you want to call it it really starts to put a strain and it'll pop, you know, it'll trip the breaker or shit or the little uh, breaker on the wall. This one, I, I've got the AC running and shit, so I try not to try not to run it wide open the whole time. So I'll run like a couple inches and then I'll stop, I'll move somewhere else and just move around regardless. Um, but she's all done, ready to roll. Probably make a couple little square filler pieces not sure if i do i'll put them in from the back side and weld them in but we'll see tomorrow so i'm pretty sure i'm gonna have to massage that a little bit more with a hammer this fucking brake master cylinder looks rough we'll upgrade the brakes eventually one day but for now i just want to get the motor in here if i got time and it's paint still hasn't showed up for this i'm gonna go ahead and got a fucking spider ah, got your ass all right a little misty out this morning, kind of cool. Got a lot of sleep on. Puppy's already in here. 
I'm going to get back after the Volvo. I kept on last night. Last night, I went through and I cut this. Didn't I, Smalls? Cut it, flipped it, welded it. She's ready to rock and roll. And now, got the motor and tranny on. We's about to see what she's going to fit like. Now, I can't. Before, with the F-body pan, I could set the engine down and just slide the, the tranny up to it and bolt it up. Now, I've got to, like, cock it all crazy and prop it up and because the truck pan's deeper. All right, so we got this thing set in there. Um, it's pretty close to where it's gonna be. Um, trying to find dead center of this, of the car, because the cross member isn't quite right. Um, problem is that the cross member and the way the mount, it mounts, the engine was kind of tilted and slanted, so the mounts are, you know, aren't completely centered. So I'm gonna take a tape measure and measure frame rail in, frame rail in, uh, and go off of that. But just going dead center of the windshield, that's about where it's probably gonna end up. I've got a couple spots still that I've gotta get uh, pounded down with a hammer just a little bit more. So I'm gonna drop the transmission uh, back out. I just had two bolts in it. I'm gonna undo it, drop it out, and probably pick the motor up out of this. I'm gonna go to town on the firewall. Uh, right now, the way the pan sits, she's the first thing that's gonna bottom out. So it's either that or I thought about also cutting cutting the pan right there uh, and going straight back and then down to make some more room to come forward or take and chop the bottom half off and raise the bottom up and then also have to shorten the uh, pickup tube. So not quite passed out. Not quite sure what route I'm gonna go. Got the old plasma cutter out. Old Eastwood. Cut just about anything. Plasma. Uh, the biggest, biggest one they got. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these brackets out real quick. Um, that one's gonna be a little more time consuming as far as burning it through. But I'm gonna go ahead, burn these little ones out, burn that one out, and then I'm gonna go ahead and make uh, the mounting tabs I'm gonna need to mount the bushings to this. Definitely, definitely need, need like a small building that I can do my metal stuff in and not worry about everything else. I just need a, a bare building uh, concrete floors, just some metal tables and welding station, like, to do this stuff. Because as you can see, it's, I mean, it's rough on the fucking concrete. I need, like, a legit table to cut plasma, or use the plasma cutter. Um, for now, this works. Nothing caught on fire. Thank goodness. I tried to sleep a bunch of crap up, get it out the way. Um, should have done it outside. I've got like a 50 foot extension for a 210 to use that plasma cutter outside anywhere. But I didn't have a table or anything outside. I need to put one out there. I need to put a little table out there that I can just wheel that out there. I need a cart. I need a cart. I need a good cart for this and that and the plasma. This is all cut out. I just got to smooth everything off, drill the holes bigger and get everything, uh, shaped up way I need it. I almost caught this thing on fire. Luckily I did it. Uh, it's making some progress today. Um, after spending hours trying to drill out the thick plate down here and the other plates and then smoothing all out with the, you know, all these, at least, you know, these two match size wise, the other ones match size wise over there. Um, still haven't quite found a bolt yet. Uh, I'd like to have one that fills this space really well. I might have to go to the hardware store and find one that has a correct length. Um, so, so far, just using these for mock-up. I got my plates on, and I can slide the plates, unbolt them, and move them back and forth because there's room on these. Um, they got different bolt patterns here, so you can slide everything around. Oops. I've got these started. So I got these plates. Sit down in there like that. I just tack one of the tops. And now I'll go through and run a bead all the way around it. And I'll probably smooth those down just a tad. But 
That one's still kind of warm, nothing crazy, but these are about ready. And then we can set the engine back down in, bolt the tranny back up, and see what we're looking like. Uh, and then we'll get an idea of where I need to place these on here. There's really only one spot, but I can, once I have room for that bolt, I can. I still got room to shuffle back and forth. But I may just put it right there. That way that's the best option to be able to get to the nut still. All right, got them loaded up real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and take the grinder and smooth the tops out some more. Um, Cause they're never coming out. So I'll take a little bit off the top of them. I got everything on this side, I got it tacked up. Got this side tacked up, ready to roll. So uh, I tried to get it as straight up and down as I could. Um, I mean, I just don't want to cock out or nothing crazy. Just, it didn't have to be perfect, but I wanted it at least angled the same direction down. So I got some progress on the, uh, old Volvo. Pacaroni sparkle in your day. Uh, got the engine mounts about done. About to tack them in place where I could just unbolt them and take them out. Uh, and then, you know, finish weld them. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna tack them just enough to pull the mounts out. And then the plan is to put a couple better tacks on there so I don't have to worry about it for the time being. Then I'll set it back down in and uh, we'll go ahead and work on the transmission mount. In there, set down, everything's got space. The pans got space, got some space. Um, literally, it's sitting perfectly just on the cross member pretty much. That cross member's what's holding it right now. Working on transmission cross member today. Already cutting a piece of pipe I had left. I was looking at it and I had a mark to cut about nine and a half ish inches. Uh, and then I look and I'm like, well, how long is this stick? Because there's not much left. I'm gonna need one for the other side, about the same. So we cut it at ten and a half. It gives me plenty of enough room on both sides to get the uh, angles and everything worked out. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut. I got five inches of pipe I'm gonna need in the middle from short end to short end. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut seven out because uh, I shouldn't need too much of an angle to butt these two things together. It's probably gonna be about like that. So we will come in just at an angle like that, go up under the transmission, and then I got a little plate that I'm gonna weld to it, build some gussets, and she'll be sturdy. I've redid the mounts a couple times up front, and uh, what I've come up with, so. I've redone them a couple times, just trying to get everything as close as I can. And it makes it tough because that tire goes up and down in air and I'm trying to keep the chassis in the same spot every time. Let's see, she's leaking just a little bit. I'm gonna double check and see here. Can't figure out where my tire's leaking at. Everywhere, literally, everywhere. And it's making it tough. So, right now, it said zero, zero yesterday, and I think the air pressure has a lot to do with that. Uh, it says, point seven degrees, just slightly that way a little bit. Not really enough to notice, I uh, should have like four point, see, this whole car moves so much, it's aggravating. Should be like 4.6 on the slant down. Um, again, kind of aggravating. Stuff moves a little much. Um, I don't know if I've moved the transmission at all. Looks like maybe a little bit. Because the rear end is already at like one up. Dinner's done. Uh, it's already like one degree upward. So when the chassis flexes, it should, probably with these stock bushings, it should move quite a bit, probably move anywhere from two to four degrees up, which will make up the difference of where five ends up up here uh, or four point whatever. It should make up the difference. And then when I stiffen it up a little bit, 
I can, uh, when I do an 8.8, I can readjust the rear end how I like it. But for now, she's sitting on the actual mounts. I pulled the steel out from under. Nothing under it anymore, holding it up. I'm just trying to get it mounted up. I got something else that needs to come in. That was the goal of this, just to get it mounted. I'm not gonna finish weld it just in case I need to, you know, readjust something. I'll probably pull the mounts out, put a couple better, you know, tack welds here and there so they're good and sturdy. No worries about it, you know, any movement or anything, shaking it loose. And then this thing can go out and I can pull the truck in. And I'd like to go ahead and start figuring out the hot side, put the front clip on, radiator, intercooler, uh, the harness will probably be the one of the last things I do. I need to go in the cab and pull out the old harness from that side. So there's a grommet over there where it goes in the firewall. I'll probably have the old lady pull it out one day, but for now, everything seems to work. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, done burning myself for a little while. Um, goodness, monster, who are you? Who's coughing? Is it you who? Coughing, bro? small off got her done um tacked up got the little pedestal made um bye you bye you go out of here dude come on do it so i took the stock uh trans cross member and i cut it right on the edge like i shot pretty sure i already did it and showed you guys and then i made a plate bolted it to the plate or welded it to the plate and then i took some of the dom tubing i had that i got to make the trans member trans member Trans cross member, Jesus Christ. Uh, and then I just took some of the uh, quarter inch, almost quarter inch, it's like, there's three sixteenths, there's three sixteenths, I believe, because four sixteenths, two would go into four, two times, two would go into that, eight times, it's two eighths, one quarter, you could put two in there again. So yeah, it was just under a qu uh, quarter inch plate, three sixteenths, and I went ahead and made a, a little pedestal, bolted it to it, and then I made these little, pieces here some gussets to help hold it and put some tacks on it let some pressure off made sure if i need to put some more tacks in places uh so i've got it pretty solidly tacked on here it should not move should not move i don't want to finish weld it yet i want to get you know turbo kit everything else in here and make sure everything's going to be golden 